Hey there YouTube, this is Frank Go, and recently I've had a few people ask me to provide an update on the PM25MV CNC uh, conversion that I'm in the middle of. So here it is, this is my update. So my goal is, uh, this is supposed to be an improved version of you know, the CNC conversion. I, I have a G0704 machine that I've converted which is working great, but this is supposed to be the the better version of that small mill CNC conversion. So my goal here, I obviously want to use the PM25 MV, but I want this machine to have the have a one-shot way lube system. I want to be able to access the grease fittings for all the ball screws. Naturally it has to have limit switches. I don't want this design to require any drilling, so no modifications to the base machine. I want to double the spindle speed. I want to use angular contact bearings to support the ball screws. I'm going to use closed loop stepper motors. This is going to run on Mach 4. And I'm going to use the Vital Systems Hicon board. So that's kind of the quick uh, rundown of what this, this conversion is all about. So let me just step through this really quickly. What I've been doing, I've been spending a lot of time reverse engineering all the castings and components on the base machine. So this has taken me forever, but it's been a real benefit now. Uh, it's making the design process a lot easier. So like I said, one thing, I, I want to have a one-shot way lube system on this machine. So uh, the base machine comes with little little channels built into it, which gets you there, helps get you there. But uh, basically I found these nice little banjo style fittings from McMaster Car and made a uh, little brass adapter that I can press into the casting and then this will thread into it. So I have those uh, inserted into the, the base machine at all the uh, places where the factory little ball oiler sockets would have appeared. So that's going to all get connected up to the uh, essential one-shot lube pump that we'll install here eventually. Now the other thing, the grease fittings, I want to be able to uh, grease these ball screws once the machine is up and running. So got it situated here so I should be able to just barely access all the grease fittings that are mounted onto the ball screws. And you can see here, uh, let's see, let me turn the column off. I have a, you know, the grease fitting right there. And I should just barely be able to get to it. I should be able to just lift up the rubber uh, dovetail cover and, and get in there to lube that. And the Y axis, well, that's why the thing is blocked up in the air. So let's see here if I can turn the column back on. Turn off the stand, turn off the tray. So the Y axis is going to have the grease fitting right there. And with the machine blocked up in the air. I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, reach up underneath it and access that that ball screw. So those will be big improvements. I, I want to use uh, flood coolant on this machine so I want to be able to make sure everything stays oiled up and greased up. Also this conversion is going to have limit switches on it. So I have a, a setup here that's similar to what I used on the the GO704. Let's see here, I'll zoom out. Uh, I like mechanical limit switches. I think they work really well. They're simple. Uh, I've had them, I found that they repeat just fine. So the Z axis is something like that. It's just going to get tripped. You know, the saddle will come up and uh, trip the Z axis. I only have one switch there. The x-axis is on the other side of this plate, and if I can find it, there we go. On the other side of that plate, 
limit switches will be mounted and the table will come over there and uh, trip those limit switches. So that's how the x-axis is going to work. That's a configuration that was very similar to what I used on the GO704 and it, it works really well. So the only difference here, I offset it to the right a little bit because there's a uh, another oil port under there for the central loop system. Then finally for the y-axis, very similar to what I used on the, the GO704. Um, see if I can give you a shot here. So there'll be a rail, this will mount to the base, and then on the saddle, I'll use a piece of uh, angled aluminum to mount two limit switches, and then I just have adjustable stops on each end. And there again, use this configuration on the GO704. It works really well, and uh, I've been using it quite a lot. I haven't had any problems with it. So there are the limit switches. Like I said, the design here, I don't want to have I don't want to modify anything on the machine, and that's a challenge. That's probably been the biggest challenge with this design, because usually on these machines, all these types of machines, you wind up having to um, grind things, make pockets, you know, do all these things to try to uh, shoehorn the ball nuts in there, especially for the x-axis, because you don't have a lot of room on the x-axis. The PM25MV is a little bit better than the GO704. You have uh, more clearance between this surface and the bottom of the table, but it's still pretty tight. So this is one thing I'm, I kind of started out thinking this was a compromise, but I'm not so sure if I want to call it a compromise anymore. I'm just going to call this an adjustment. Normally, most people want to throw a 16 millimeter ball screw in here. And I see a lot of people do that, but as far as I can tell, the only way you're going to be able to do that is to uh, kind of, you're going to have to like plow a trench in the saddle, and you're going to have to modify the ball nut uh, to just to shoehorn that thing in there. I've done that. It's no, I, well, you know, it's not super hard. You know, it's not hard to mill out a pocket or grind a pocket and these uh, ball nuts they're case hardened so once you get through the case hardening they're they're easy to machine but I just didn't want to do that so I got in some half inch uh, lead screws some half inch ball screws and you know they're not too bad I don't think there's going to be any problems using a half inch ball screw for the x-axis so I'm, I'm going to go with a half inch ball screw well 12 millimeter ball screw for the x and y axis and um, I may, once I get this together, I may replace the stock ball bearings with some oversized ball bearings just to get rid of some more backlash, but we'll see how I feel. But that is my answer to uh, not having to modify the machine. So I can just barely, let me turn the table back on, I can just barely fit those in there. And it looks pretty good. So I'm... I'm happy with that. So that was an adaptation I had to do here, an adjustment to make this a uh, no modification required design. So I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully it'll work. The While we're on that topic, the other thing I wanted to do, I wanted to use ang uh, angular contact bearings to support the ball screws. And um, I actually am using the, rather than, you know, machine those pockets and, uh, you know, try to support the bearings. I'm, I'm going to use the, the pre-configured, pre-loaded uh, cartridges that come from the, you know, the same people that make the uh, ball screws and ball nuts. They'll sell you these these cartridges. So I feel that's better. That has has the perfect preload on it. And, you know, the nice thing is if for some reason you need to replace one, you can just pop it off and replace it. So that exists for the X, for the Y, and for Z-axis. 
And by the way, I am using a 16 millimeter ball screw on the Z axis, and I'm going to use the double ball nut for the Z axis. So there's, there's no space constraints up there for Z axis. So I will go with the larger ball screw, and uh, that probably makes sense because the Z axis is really heavy compared to X and Y. It's doing a lot of work. All right. I um, already have another video out there with my answer for doubling the spindle speed. Um, I'm going to basically build an idler shaft here and um, use this to, to double the RPM. Uh, these micro V pulleys, these things are not uh, super, super, super common. And I don't really have a setup right now to turn a big pulley like that. So I'm just going to use the stock micro V pulleys, but I'm going to add this idler shaft and these um, gear tooth pulleys up here. And I'm going to double the RPM that way. I'm going to continue to use the stock motor and the stock electronics. and um, But this will work. I, I've done something sort of similar to this in my GO704. It's worked great. So I don't see any reason why this won't work. But, um, you know, for some reason it does fail, we'll, we'll just come at it from a different direction. But that's the idea there. Okay. Um, you've probably seen the other videos. I'm going to use the closed loop stepper motors. As uh, far as I can tell, those things are going to work great. I have NEMA 23s for X and Y, and I probably overdid it. I threw a giant 1200 ounce NEMA 34 on the Z axis. I don't think I need it that large of a motor, but hey, I have it. I'm going to use it. So it should do the job. Mach 4, obviously, we're going to use Mach 4. Uh, you've probably seen the other video I put up on my channel with the Vital Systems Hycon board. That thing looks like it's going to work great. Really excited. It looks like a really good professional grade interface board. I still have to design an enclosure for this. I want this thing to. Uh, be enclosed so I can run flood coolant. I don't want chips flying all over the place. So still have to work on that. As I mentioned, I'm going to have some kind of coolant system, but that should be pretty simple once everything else is done. So there you go. I hope that wasn't too boring and drawn out. Try to keep this under 15 minutes. And there it is. That is the my CNC conversion here of the Precision Matthews PM25MV. Done all this design in Fusion 360. And uh, it's been tedious, but it, I'm pretty happy with it. It's been a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of time with the caliper and the micrometer and the tape measure and the, uh, the uh, protractor and all that good stuff. But I think that's all going to pay off in the end because... You know, once you have all this information captured here electronically, the design process is a lot easier. Well, okay. Thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting. And um, if you're interested in this, just keep an eye on my channel. I will continue to uh, put videos up as I make progress on this. So thanks a lot. Be safe.